Yeah. Yeah. So all praise, we gonna keep it going, keep it going, man. All praise to the most high God, Yahweh. Show me how we're shining. Right, give me Psalm chapter 94 and verse 16. Give me Acts chapter 19 and verse 8. We're gonna get a seat for you. Two. Man, get off my neck, man. We're gonna get a seat for you. Oh, yeah, Christ. Psalm 94 and 16. What do you look like? Psalm chapter 94, verse number 16. Who will rise up for me? Who will rise up for me? What are y'all doing? Who will rise up for me? Who will rise up for me? Most times asking a question. You know what I'm saying? Through his servant prophet David. Who will rise up for me? Against the evil doers. Against who? Against the evil doers. 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 Who's going to rise up against the evil doers? Who's going to rebuke and correct these Christians out here, man? That's saying that, oh, church, the seventh day of the week, that's the Sabbath, man. Sunday is the Sabbath of the Lord now. It's been changed. Hey, that's the evil doers, man. You go to church on Sunday, that's 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 a part of evil doing, man. Right? You out here eating pork. Hey, that's some evil doing, man. You out here buying on the Shabbat, the real Sabbath day. Hey, that's evil doing, man. Shaving your beard off, man. Hey, that's evil doing, man. Hey, that's evil doing, man. Right now, and we out here to tell you the truth, man. Whether you like it, accept it, believe it or not, we rebuke you in the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Right. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Against who? Against, against the workers of iniquity. What's this nigga? Against the workers of iniquity. What's loving your enemy? Against the workers of iniquity. Against the workers of iniquity. Against the workers of iniquity. So against the workers of iniquity. It's us, man. It's the Hebrew Israelites, man. So-called blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians. It's high time for you to wake up and realize who your damn enemies are, man. God. Come back to loving your damn own, man. It's so right. much discord between so-called blacks and Hispanics. How can you love other people if, if it's so much discord in your own damn house, man? It's impossible to love anybody else right. if you don't correct your own household first. Right. You've got to correct home. We'll, we'll get to the other nations in a minute. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta understand the order of God's prophecy, man. Right. Why is it more to that king? Unless the Lord has been my help. Unless the what? Unless the Lord has been my help. Not a white man. Unless the Lord has been my help. Not a white man in this life. Unless the Lord has been my help. Unless the most high God is our help, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? We're not looking to the other nations to change our, our situation, man. You gotta get that cold spirit up out of you, brother. Right. You out here, you know you're still Uncle Ruckus out here, man. <laughs> That's what you're doing right now, brother. Hey, we don't like coons, man. The Lord don't like coons, man. Right, give me 2 Maccabees chapter 11 and verse 21. Bring this out, King, chapter 19 and verse 8. This is the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 8. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months and disputed and persuaded the things concerning the kingdom of God. And disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. All right, so Paul was going uh, uh, consistently to the synagogues, man, to talk to his people, man. Right. Disputing. That's debating, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? This is debating the, the word of God, all the things concerning Jesus Christ, man. Right. All the things concerning the kingdom of heaven. He was going consistently every single week, every single Shabbat. You know what I'm saying? Disputing the. Uh, read that again one more time. Oh, verse 9. Oh, verse 9. But when he... Diverse. Oh, okay. This is, so, uh, this is the book of Acts, uh, verse, uh, chapter 19, verse 8. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months and disputed and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. And, uh, verse 9. But when diverse... Diverse were hardened and believed not, but spake evil at the way before the multitude. And he departed from them and separated the uh, disciples and disputed daily in the school of of what uh, of tyrannous. So we've seen Paul consistently disputing the word. Right. You know what I'm saying we see we seen Paul consistently rebuking the people. Give me Jude chapter one and verse three, right quick. Can you bring this up? 
Precept, whatever you got? Yeah, verse Maccabees 11, verse 21. That certain ungodly person. That certain of what? That certain ungodly person. What does the Bible call cool? That certain ungodly person. What does the Bible call sellout? That certain ungodly person. What does the Bible call traitor? That certain ungodly person. You are an ungodly person according to God's word, man. Because why? Why is he ungodly? Let's find out, boy. Who hated their own people. How does he feel? Who hated their own people. Not focus on the unity amongst our own. Who hated their own people. You hate your own people by, by loving your oppressors, man. You hate your own people. Why not fix what's, what's wrong in your own house first before you love anybody else, man? Why are you sitting here trying to hug the enemy, man? Why, why are you sitting here getting in the enemy's face, trying to give him a kiss, you're shucking and jiving, you're tap dancing, you shoot, you, you shoot stepping, you know what I'm saying? You all, hey, brother, we, we don't want to see that. You like the Johnson brothers out here, man. <laughs> Just tapping around, just putting on a good old Negro show. Just being a good old sambo for your enemies, man. Right. Hey, look, we don't respect you. We gave you a chance, man. Right. Tell me to shut your damn mouth, man. That's right. Truth of the Bible, man. Hey, hardcore. Hey, to hell with all that, man. That's right. We respect those that keep the laws of God. Man. That's right. Verse 21, and Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. 
because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebecca his wife conceived, and the children struggled together within her. And the children did what? And the children struggled together within her. And look, so from the beginning, these two children were struggling in the womb of their mother. They were twins, right? Right? But go ahead. And she said, if it be so, shut, shut up, devil. Go ahead. If it be so, why am I thus? Why am I what? If it be so, why am I thus? So Rebecca wanted to know. Why was she, you know, feeling these major contractions within her, man? Right. As the children were struggling within her womb, right? Go ahead. Right. And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. To what? Two, Two nations are in thy womb. So what does that mean, brother? Two nations are in the womb of Rebecca. Is that the same people? Is that the same? We're going to keep going. But you, you got you to gotta be able to dialogue, man. Right. You got to be able to dialogue. You said you want to go to the story. We go on to the story. Brother, so so what does that represent? The two nations. Brother, no, nah, we got we to gotta stand. You got you to gotta answer these questions. The Bible says what? Give me First Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. Now, hold on, brother. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. Let's get there right quick. Quick on the sword, man. In Lada El Rapido Espada, however you say it, man. Quick on the sword. Right, bring it up. Uh, this is the, uh, the book of First Peter, chapter 3 and 15. But sanctify the Lord. Let's see, let's see like it. Uh, this is the book of First Peter, chapter 3 and verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. And be ready always to give an answer. Be what? And be ready always to give an answer. Be what? And be ready always to give an answer. What are you supposed to do? And be ready to always to give an answer. You're supposed to be ready to always give an answer when you are asked a question, brother. We're asking you a question about Rebecca and the two nations in her womb. We want to know what does that represent from a Christian coon's perspective. Be ready to give an answer. Brother, we didn't go over this part. Who are, the, who are the two nations right here in this particular scripture? We're talking about what I think. Brother, what I think. we just what asked I you a specific think. question so on Genesis 25 and 23. Man, we don't care to know. You want to know the scriptures, brother. Right. We want to know the scriptures, and we're asking you a direct question. Brother, why you can't answer the question? If you don't know, just say you don't know. You say, Brother, if, if you don't know, it, it, it's, 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 not, it's nothing wrong with saying you don't know. Bro. You can't be proud, brother. Bro. Don't be proud. Those are called strong. Brother, you know what? When I, when I, when I, when I, Nobody can't know. Because talk. you keep nigga babbling. You keep, you keep nigga babbling. I don't want to hear nigga talk. When I was in the street. Nigga babbling. I, I don't want to hear nigga talk. Say, Look, the no brother way. asked you to pull out your Bible. You, you didn't open it one goddamn time, man. <laughs> you didn't open it one time. I told time. you the truth. No. <laughs> I told you. I told us your truth. Let's keep going on that first Peter chapter 3. I spoke of the word. I spoke of the word. Yeah, bring it. Yeah, bring it. Yeah, come. This is our right chapter 5, verse number 12. If thou hast understanding, thou hast what? If thou hast understanding, enter thy neighbor. You what? Enter thy neighbor. What are you supposed to do? Enter thy neighbor. A wise man, through the understanding of the law, statutes, and commandments, He's going to answer his neighbor right. when somebody presents a question to him. Right. right? But if, if you're not wise, right, go ahead. If not, lay thy hand upon thy mouth. What should the cone have done? Lay thy hand upon thy mouth. What should the sellout have done? Lay thy hand upon thy mouth. What should the traitor have done? Lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Brother, you're supposed to zip it and flip it. Zip it and flip it, man. Humble down. Hear the word from the people that have studied and, and got the understanding through elders themselves. Brother, come on now. Humble down, right? Keep going on that king. And it says, honor and shame is in talk. And the tongue of man is his fault. And the tongue of man is his fault. Actually, read up to verse 10. Go ahead. Verse, verse 9. Go ahead. Verse 9. Window not with every wind. Window what? Window not with every wind. Meaning don't get involved with all different philosophies and doctrines. You toss to and fro. Window not with every wind. Go ahead. And go not in, into every way. For so doth the sinner that have a double tongue. So doth the sinner that have a double tongue. Right now, you, you are yeah, proving yourself to be in sin and you have a double tongue. Right, you cannot be in sin and try to edify nobody on the Bible, man. You are clearly in sin, brother. All right? So you can't do that. All right? You're a hypocrite, brother. You are a hypocrite. Go ahead. And it reads, be steadfast. 
fast in thy understanding. And let thy word be the same. And let thy word be the same. So you're supposed to be steadfast. You know what I'm saying? Unmovable. Unshakable, man. In your understanding. You don't even know what understanding is according to God's word. Huh? What is understanding? Let's get that right quick. Brother, no, you're not, you're not giving us nothing. Huh? You're not giving us nothing. Because you're not answering no questions. Huh? All right, go ahead. It says, be swift to hear. Be what? Be swift to hear. What does the Bible say? Be swift to hear. The Bible tells us to be swift to hear. This is why God gave you two ears and one mouth, Negro. All right, two ears and one mouth. He wanted you to hear more than, the, more than your nigga babble. God don't like nigga babble, man. That's right. Go ahead. And let thy light be sincere and with patience give answer. And with patience give answer. Romans 9 and 11, because he was going to go there and say this. Romans 9 and 11, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand. Not a birth, but of him that call it. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Esau have I hated. So, so, so check this out. Give me Genesis chapter 25. We're going to go back to the real Genesis 25. Before we get that, let me get... I hate your brother like you see every day. Now, you ain't never seen God. Man, what y'all ain't never seen? Genesis 25 and 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two matter of people shall be separated. Hey, sisters, y'all got time for the word? Y'all walk in. Yeah, I walk in like three times. Come here to the word of the Lord. Come here to the word of the Lord. Y'all walk in like three times. You know what I'm saying? Y'all kind of, y'all nigga babbling just like this guy, man. You know what I'm saying? But it said, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Right, go ahead. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. The what? And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. Right, so brother, does the most high ordain slavery to take place? You hear me, brother? I'm asking you another question. Does the Most High ordain slavery to be in the earth? Does he ordain one people to rule over another people? He doesn't ordain that? Leviticus 25 right there. Let's find out. Let's find out, man. The Most High, we just said that the elder shall serve the younger. 25 and uh, 40. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 25 and verse 40. But as in higher servant, and as a sojourner, he shall be with thee and shall be. Start at the 38. Good. Verse 38. I, the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. So we see the Lord is talking to the Israelites, right? Oh, yeah, we're going to drop down there. The Most High is talking to the Israelites. He delivered them out of Egypt and brought them to the land of Canaan, which was the, the former name of what is now called today Israel, right? Drop down to verse 45, 44. Verse 44, both thy bondmen and bondmaids, which thou shalt have. He said your bondmen and your bondmaids. What is a bondman and a bondmaid? What is that? Is that a servant, would you say? Brother, come on now. Okay, so so a bondman is a slave. A bondwoman is a female slave. You see what I'm saying? Right, so he said, to, saying to the Israelites, both your bondmen and your bondwomen shall be what? Which thou shalt have shall be of the heathen. Be of the who? Shall be of the heathen. So a heathen is a non-Jew, a non-Israelite person. Somebody of another nation shall be the slave. Let, it, let us finish. Let's find out why God is ordaining that. Go ahead. No, you're not listening. Listen, brother. Listen to what the scripture just said. Listen, He's brother. Listen. Israelites, you cannot, you cannot have a slave of your own nation 
but you can have a slave of somebody who's not on the 12 tribes. That's right. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. That arm, look, Slocky, shall be of the heathen that are around about you. Of them shall ye buy bond men and bond maids. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do so join among you, of them shall ye buy. And of their families that are with you, which ye begot in your land, and they shall be your possession. So the Lord said these other nations shall be the Israelites' possession, brother. That's right. right so the most I ordain slavery. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like the bike is your possession, like the jacket you're wearing is your possession. So the most I ordain slavery. So we ain't going to be no Do you agree with that? Of course it is. I just, I don't, the Pope, let me, wait one second. I just want you to concede to the fact that God said he ordained slavery before we go to the next point. Do you agree with God ordaining slavery? By the way, before you jump to the next point or before you make a statement, do you agree with God ordaining slavery? I, do you agree with God ordaining slavery? Right after you, uh, you answer this question, do you agree that God ordained slavery for the Israelites to have so they can have servants? Yes, God has chosen people, does He not? Okay. He talk about the temple come from the top. We have corrupt people at the top. So brother, we have corrupt brother, Big Meat talk about did the most high. Yeah, so we don't care about what Big Meat should Come. We don't give a damn about the BMF, the Black Family Mafia. We don't care. Give us, give us a scripture. Now does God have a chosen people? God is the ethical God. Okay, does God have a chosen people? Listen, brother. Give me First Samuel chapter fifteen and verse three, right quick. First Samuel chapter. No, because brother, we want scriptures. We do not want lectures. We want scriptures. That's right. Pull your Bible back out. We want scriptures. No, we're not pulling up the book. You. you pull it yourself, brother, because we don't want to hear a nigga about it. Let's see what God ordained again. Let's find out what God ordained the Israelites to do to the white race. Go ahead. Verse 7, chapter 15, and verse 3. Now go and smite Amalek. And what did God say? Now go and smite Amalek. What did God tell the Israelites to do to the white race? And go and smite Amalek. What did God tell the Israelites to go do to the fake Jew? Now go and smite Amalek. God told the Israelites, go and kill the Amaleks. Right, the Amalekites. Go and kill Amalek. Go ahead. And, and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but and spare them not, but slay both men and women, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Right, so the most high, I turn it back this way, girl. Right. So the most high the Israelites and told them, commanded them. To go and slay Amalek, man. Right. Kill and kill everything, man. Right. Kill everything, move. Like the movie in the Players Club. When that nigga in the wheelchair walked in at the end, or walked in, I said, right? right. He, he rolled in at the end. Right. He said, hey, if there's anybody here that don't want to get murdered, get the fuck out. Come! But everybody started running when that happened, man. Right. Hey, the most I told the Israelites, hey, go in there, kill everything, move. That's right! To the white race. Man. That's right. Exodus chapter 24 and verse 17. Right? Hey, we killing everything. When the Most High gives us that green light, hey, we killing everything. That's right. Exodus 24 and 17. And in the sight of the glory of the Lord was like the power and power fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and gathered him up into the mouth. And Moses was in the mouth 40 days and 40 nights. Bring it up one more time. I got two minutes for the word. Who was that last recent we read? First Samuel chapter 15 and verse 3. Got a couple minutes for the word. Numbers chapter 24 and verse 20 real fast. Bring it up. Verse 7, verse 15 and verse 3. Now go and smite Emelik and utterly destroy all that they have. Do 
what? And utterly destroy all that they have. All right, so the most I said, hey, utterly destroy all that they have. Even their pets, man. All the little children, hey, God said, kill them all, man. That's right. Go ahead. And spare them not. And do what? And, and spare, spare them, them not. not. Let some of them go. And, and spare them not. Them not. Now have mercy on them. And, and spare, spare them, them not. not. But slay both men and women. But slay what? But, but slay, slay both, both men and women. And God said, hey, look. Hey, man can get it. A woman can get it. The Lord said, my chest, my chest. Oh, yeah, there we go. So he said, hey, he said, hey, man can get it. Woman can get it. Hey, the most high is the original can man. You know what I'm saying? It don't, hey, anybody can get it. That's if right. If you American, That's if you right. African, yes, sir. you know what I'm saying? If you Dominican, hey, if you Mexican, right. hey, Dawson, anybody can get it. Right. That's right. All praise to the most high God, man. Next time, next time. So again, yeah, so the, so the most high is the original hand man. That's right. right. Yeah, so hey, look, hey, keep going on that, kid. Bring First it up. of the four, and so the most high gathered the people together and numbered them in 10 years, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. Mm -hmm. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and lay wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. Numbers 24 and 20. You know, when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. Shall be what? That he perish forever. Shall be what? That he perish forever. Right, so Amalek, who the world identifies as being the Jewish people in the world today, God said, hey, look, their end result is, is going to be that they perish forever. Man. That's right. The latter end of the Jewish race, the Jewish people, is going to be that they perish forever. Right. And all Europeans, man. But, but the Most High said, hey, look, we're going to get our lick back. Right. All of the all of the stuff that they did to us, all of the lynchings, all of the, uh, the, the, the genocide that they committed upon us, hey, God said we're going to commit genocide on them, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, and the coons can't deal with that, man. Right. The coons get all, you know what I'm saying? They get all, you know, kind of they wax cold. You know what I'm saying? They get they get a little bothered, man. You know what I'm saying? Bring it up. Exodus chapter 17, verse number 13. And Joshua discomforted Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. While utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. While utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. That's right. He said, I'm going to utterly put out the remembrance. Come a little closer, King. Daryl, come a little closer. So, oh, both of them. Oh, it's that time. So, the most I said he's going to utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek. You know what I'm saying? Rightfully so. They were one of the first nations to come up against us, right? Especially when we left out of Egypt, Amalek was the first. Right. You know said to come out, you know, probably, you know, had been spoken for a while. You know said looking for his best opportunity to come against God's chosen people. How do you guys feel about that? You were here earlier, weren't you not? Right? You believe in Jesus? You don't, right? That makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Con. You know what I'm saying? So the Mosad, hey, give me that dude. And the Mosad told the Israelites off to bring about destruction on these other nations. You know what I'm saying? And, and the Mosad's gonna give the green light to the 144,000. You know what I'm saying? Snatching all of the, the elite people out of the uh, underground bunkers. You know what I'm saying? Snatching up the elite people in the Eastern Hemisphere. You know what I'm saying? That's ruling those in those parts of the world. You know what I'm saying? So the Mosad's gonna destruct. Organize everything right. How you guys feel? You guys believe in the Bible? I see your face. How do you feel about this image right here? Come up. Come on, come up. Come on, Miha. 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 Uno momento. Uno momento. Miha. 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 Miha.
That's right. <laughs> what is that music, bro? the spoil of their cattle and all the flocks and all the goods and percent and they burnt all the cities wherein they dwelt and all their goodly cattle with fire right so the most high told the israelites hey go and destroy the, the, the midianites man go and bring about judgment upon the nation of media you know what i'm saying upon, upon the people of media you know what i'm saying so and that's what the israelites did they followed through on all the things the Most High commanded them to do. You're saying, this, this is my problem, man. A lot of Christians think God is just all love, man. It's, it's impossible for God to just be all love. Can we Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1, man? God is not just all love. If he wasn't, if he was just all love, he wouldn't be a supreme being. You know what I'm saying? Like people would project him to be. He has to have every range of emotion that we have upon this earth as humans. You know what I'm saying? And he has to have every bit of power uh, uh, that comes along with it, man. You know what I'm saying? So if the Most High has love, he has rage. He has wrath, man. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So let's find out what the scripture says, right? Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the, under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to plug up two for the that word? which is planted. Come in the so words it's of God. a time for everything. Come in the words of God. To every purpose under the sun, there is a, a, a season. Come in right? the words of God, brother. Deal with come on, Edgar. Come on, come, come up to the front, man. Don't worry about it. Man. Come on now, you too. Come on, come on, both of you. Come up to the front. Don't be come scared. Come on, come man. on. Family out here, man. Come on. I'm just playing with you with the Edgar thing. What's your name, man? George, man, George. Okay, so it's either gonna be Edgar, George, Jose, Juan. It's gonna, it's gonna be one of the four, man. You know what I'm saying? But no, nah, it's all Jesus. Right? So, <laughs> but no, nah, finish this right quick. Okay? It says, a time. Verse eight. A, a time to love. A time to what? A time to love. A time to hate. What does the Bible say? And a time to hate. So a time to love. And a time to hate. You know what I'm saying? So it's gonna be it's gonna be consistency with the most high balance. 